In Module 1, we learned to analyze business events to determine which were transactions that had to be recorded in the accounts. Transactions were the events that did cause changes in assets, liabilities, and owner equity. And we recorded them using a table with accounts where we recorded increases and decreases in columns and then determine the account balances by adding and subtracting at the end of the period. We're now going to transition into a different kind of accounting system. And this is a rather difficult transition to make. It does take some getting used to. So if you find yourself feeling a little uncomfortable with it, uh, uh, count yourself as uh, normal. And be prepared then to devote the time and effort it takes to mastering the debit and credit rules. You'll find that after a bit of practice, they do come to you and you do become comfortable using them. In the previous module, we recorded increases and decreases in account balances using a table such as is illustrated here. And that system is perfectly usable. However, as the business becomes larger, it becomes a little difficult to apply. Um, as the business becomes larger, it probably will need to maintain a good many more accounts than are illustrated here. And the single sheet of paper soon becomes too small to hold them all. So a solution is to, instead of using one sheet of paper to list all the accounts on in a table, we use a single sheet of paper for each account. So I now have a stack of papers, and each sheet of paper represents an account whose balance I'm maintaining. If I bind the papers together, I form a book. The antique name for book is ledger, so I would now have a ledger of accounts. And this is what we refer to as the general ledger of accounts. I have another problem with this accounting system, though. If I've recorded all the increases and decreases in the accounts in a single column, page after page after page, then for a large business that might have hundreds or thousands of transactions in an accounting period, the process of going through all those numbers at the end of the period and adding and subtracting and subtracting and adding to get an ending balance is going to be very challenging indeed. So a solution was to divide the account into two sides. And on one side, record all the increases. On the other side, record all the decreases. And then at the end of the period, all I'd have to do is add up the column that has all the increases recorded in it, add up the column with all the decreases and get a total there, and then net the two out to see what the overall total balance in the account is. This will simplify the math quite a bit and make this system very functional indeed. Uh, the left side of the account is the debit side of the account. The right side of the account is the credit side. You see illustrated here three different accounts. And as we discussed earlier, they have been divided into two sides. And we note that the left side of the account is called the debit side, and the right side is the credit side. Uh, when we do this, when we divide the page into two sides, we form a little T. And these kinds of accounts are referred to as T accounts. The rules regarding recording increases and decreases in these accounts are as follows. Increases are recorded in asset accounts on the left side of the account, the debit side. And decreases are recorded on the right side, the credit side. And then we reverse this rule for liabilities and owner equity. And increases are recorded in liabilities on the right side of the account, the credit side. Decreases on the left side, the debit side. And the same is true for the owner equity, the capital account. Therefore, if I debit an asset account, I'm increasing it. But if I debit a liability or the capital account, I'm decreasing it. And likewise, if I credit an asset account, I'm decreasing it. But if I credit a liability or the capital account, I'm increasing it. I know this is confusing, and it's difficult to get used to but you do need to practice with these debit and credit rules until you know them very well. They're fundamental to everything else we do in the remainder of this course. 
Well, we've certainly made things a good deal more complicated by introducing debits and credits, but we're about to make them even more complicated. If you look at the bottom of the slide, you'll see that in the upper right-hand corner, we have the capital account from the previous page. And as we explained, increases in capital are recorded with credits and decreases with debits. But then we also have three other accounts shown. They're referred to as temporary accounts. The capital account is called the permanent or real account. Uh, temporary accounts are also called income statement accounts. And the capital account, along with liabilities and assets, is referred to as a balance sheet account. The reason for using these separate temporary accounts is because if we tried to record everything as we have so far directly in the capital account, at the end of the accounting period when we tried to do the income statement, we would have a mess. It would be very difficult to go through hundreds or thousands of entries to the capital account and try to pick out what the services revenues were separate from investments or separate from rental revenues or other kinds of revenues. It would be very difficult to go through all the debit entries to capital and try to separate out withdrawals from expenses, the utilities expense from the telephone expense, and so on. So a handy way to keep track of the different types of things that do go into the capital account is to simply set up another little capital account to record them in. And that's what these temporary accounts really represent. Little separate capital accounts where things that we have been recording so far in the real permanent capital account are recorded temporarily instead. Uh, temporarily because we'll only keep them there until we do the income statement. And then it will be safe to move them back into the capital account where they really belong. If you look at the illustration on the slide, you'll see that I've drawn in some blue arrows. And that's because I want you to think of these separate temporary accounts as little capital accounts in and of themselves. And notice directly under capital, we have the revenue account. Since revenues increase on our equity, then revenues would represent credits to the capital account. And if the revenue account is just a separate little capital account, then increases in revenues would be recorded with credits to the revenue account and decreases with debits. In other words, it would mirror the capital account. But then if you look to the left of these two accounts, you'll see the drawing account, which is used for withdrawals from the business, along with an expense account. And withdrawals and expenses all decrease on our equity. So notice that an increase in withdrawals or an increase in expenses would be recorded with a debit since debits decrease on our equity. And then likewise, decreases in withdrawals or in the expense account would be recorded with a credit since that would represent an increase in owner equity. What we have presented on this slide is a summary of all the different types of accounts that we've talked about so far along with the debit credit rules regarding how increases and decreases are recorded in them. Uh, we need to point out that normally accounts have positive balances. So the asset accounts would have normally a debit balance. The liability accounts would have normal credit balances. And then for owner equity, the capital account and the revenue account will have normal credit balances the drawing account and expense accounts would have normal debit balances.